In this video, we're going to take a look at tangent and card properties. Now, before we begin any questions here, let's just quickly recap what we already know about tangents. Now, we actually discussed this in the previous video where we were taking a look at straight lines and circles and the intersection between those. And we mentioned that a, a straight line that touches a circle at one point only, this would be a tangent. Okay, and we can see from this diagram here that the straight line here is a tangent to the circle at this point here, B. Okay. Now, let's just refer back to GCSE maths when we took a look at circle theorems. So if we have a point here, say the center here at A, and it touches a point on the circumference here, let's say this point here B, which is actually a tangent to the circle, then from this point here, the center, to this point here on the circumference, this would form a radius, okay? And where this line here, this radius meets the tangent, this is perpendicular, so they meet at a right angle, okay? This is a right angle here, and obviously it will be the same on this side, okay? And this is actually really important because if we want to find the equation of this tangent, then we need to make use of this fact here that they meet at a right angle, okay? That they're perpendicular, basically. Because we can then find the gradient of this line here, the radius. And from using that, then if we know that they meet at a right angle, then we can find the perpendicular gradient and then hence, as a result, find the equation of this tangent here, okay? So that's quite an important fact. We're going to make use of that as we answer questions here in this video. Um, but again, just referring back to G basic GCSE maths, that is an important property, okay? So that's the first point. And the other point really to make here is about cards. So if I have two points here on the circumference, so this point here, and let's just say this point here, and I join these together like so, this would be a card, okay? So any two points on the circumference, that are meeting like that, that form a line segment, then that's a card, okay? So that's all we really need to kind of get started with this video. So now let's just jump into the question. But before we do that, let's just clear everything that we've drawn here so far. So what I've got here is a circle C, which has this equation. Now, for part A, we're asked to show that the point B, minus 1, 6, lies on the circle C. And we can see B here, okay? So we know B has coordinates minus 1, 6 okay but how do we actually show that that lies on the circle c well the way to do that is to take this point here minus one six and substitute these coordinates here into our equation okay because if this point here does lie in the circle then once we substitute it in what we get in the left hand side here once we sub x and y in it must be equal to the right hand side okay so what i've got then is x plus four all squared so minus one plus four all squared plus, so this is now y minus 2, so if y is 6, that's 6 minus 2 all squared, and this should be equal to 25. Okay, so let's just evaluate what we get here. So minus 1 plus 4, that's 3, so I get 3 squared. 6 minus 2, that's 4, so I get 4 squared. And what you might notice here straight away is what I've actually got is a Pythagorean triple, because what I get here is 9 plus 16. And 9 plus 16 gives me 25 there. Okay. And that's exactly what we wanted to get. Okay. So therefore, B, which is minus 1, 6, lies on the circle C. Okay. So lies on the circle C. And there we have it. So that's all we need to do for part A. So that's part A done. Now for part B, it says here, given that A is the center of the circle C, we just want to find an equation for the tangent to C at the point B. Okay, and we can see that from our diagram here. But we want to give the answer in the form AX plus BY plus C equals zero, where A, B, and C are integers to be found. So I'm just going to clear part A here because we don't actually really need that for um, part B. So let's have a look at part B up here. So we want to find the equation of this tangent here. So like we said, if we know this is the center here, which we're told here, then if I can find the gradient of the radius here, so not very straight, but that's the radius here, okay? If we can find the gradient of this line, then I can find the perpendicular gradient, and because we already know the coordinates of this point here, we can easily then find the equation of the tangent. So let's do that step by step. So let's start by finding the gradient of the radius here. So if I know this point here, b is minus 1, 6, 
and I know a is the center here. So if I've got my equation of my circle here, then a will be minus four because it's x plus four, and it will be positive two for the y coordinate. Okay, so that's minus four two. Then let's find the gradient here. So m is equal to y two minus y one all over x two minus x one. So just using some basic coordinate geometry here. Um, doesn't matter which obviously you pick as x1, y1. Um, if I say this is x1, y1, this will obviously be then x2 and y2. But again, this really doesn't matter. So it's going to be 2 minus 6. So 2 minus 6 here. And that's x2 minus x1. So minus 4 minus minus 1. So that's the same as minus 4 plus 1. Okay. So what do I get here? Well, 2 minus 6 is minus 4. And minus 4 plus 1, that is um, minus 3 here. Okay, so that's minus 3. So I've got minus 4 over minus 3. So they'll just cancel, and I'm going to get 4 over 3 there. Okay, or when I say they'll cancel, I mean the negative signs. So we get 4 over 3 for the gradient. Seems sensible. It's a positive gradient. Um, obviously, we've got a negative gradient. Just, you know, it's these little things to watch out for. If you've got a negative gradient, then we'd want to double check that. So we get 4 over 3 for the gradient there. So now that we know the gradient here of this line, and we know that these meet at a right angle, the perpendicular, then we can find the perpendicular gradient. So the perpendicular gradient, that's equal to the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So in that case, we flip this, times it by minus 1, and that will give me minus 3 over 4. Okay, so we get minus 3 over 4. So because we now know the perpendicular gradient, we know the point here B, all I need to do is make use of the equation of a straight line. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. Okay. So obviously y1 and x1 are these coordinates here because that's the point we're using. So I'm going to do y minus 6 because that's my y1 is equal to m, which is our gradient here, minus 3 over 4 times x minus x1, so my coordinate or my x coordinate here at this point that we're finding the equation of the tangent for. So because that's minus 1, just be very careful here, that's going to be minus minus 1, which is the same as positive 1. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to expand this right hand side here first. You kind of want to just multiply straight away through by 4, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm probably just doing it the longer way, but let's just go with it. So y minus 6 is equal to minus 3 over 4x. And then minus 3 over 4 times 1, giving me minus 3 over 4. So like I said, the reason I'm now going to times through by this 4 here, this denominator, is because the form that we need to give this um, tangent in is in this form here where a, b, and c are all integers. So clearly, I need to times through by 4 to get rid of these fractions. So I get 4y minus 6 times 4, so that's minus 24, is equal to minus 3x and then minus 3 here, okay? Now I want it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So there's two ways of actually representing this because what I can do here is take the minus 3x and the minus 3 over to that side. Or obviously what I could also do is take the 4y and the minus 24 also across here. Doesn't matter which way you do it, but to me it makes sense here to take the minus 3x and the minus 3 across. So we've got some positive, um, you know, so we've got positive 3x and positive 4y rather than everything being negative, basically. So add 3x to both sides, so I get 3x plus 4y. 3x plus 4y. And I've got minus 24 here, so if you add 3 to both sides, that would give me minus 21 there. Okay, and this is all equal to 0. And there we have it. So that's our solution. That is the equation for the tangent to C at the point B. So that's our solution here. So let's just highlight that. And that's what you should get for the first question. Okay. So let's take a look at one more question here to finish with. Now, what I've got here is the circle C, which has this equation here. And we're told that the circle C has radius R and its center is at the point A. And what makes this a little bit more difficult is it's not in the form of X minus A all squared plus Y minus B all squared is equal to R squared. So we need to get it into that form. So to do that, let's group the variable x together. Then we're going to group the variable y together. And we'll complete the square on each variable separately. So doing that, we get x squared plus 4x 
then got y squared minus 6y. y squared minus 6y. And that's all equal to 16. Okay. So what we're going to do is complete the square on x first. So that will give me x plus 2 all squared. Then we subtract this value squared here. So I get minus 4. Then do the same for the variable y here. So that would give me plus y minus 3 all squared. Subtract this value squared again, minus 9. And again, this is all equal to 16. So from here, what I want to do is get it into the form of x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared is equal to r squared. Okay. So to do that, the only thing I've actually got to do here is add 4 and 9 to both sides. So in other words, just add 13 to both sides. So if we do that, let's do it over here. I'm going to get x plus 2 all squared. And I've got y minus 3 all squared. And that's going to be equal to 16 plus 13, giving me 29 there. Okay. So for the value of r, well, we know r squared is equal to 29. So r is equal to the square root of 29. That should hopefully be nice and straightforward. And for the coordinates of a, which is the center of the circle, then what we do is we just inspect our equation here of the circle. And the x quadrant will be minus 2. Remember, we take the opposite sign, so minus 2. And if that's minus 3, then the y quadrant will be positive 3. Okay. And there we have it. So that's part A done, giving us the radius and the center. We're then told that the point P31 lies on the circle. So I want to show that an equation of the tangent to the circle at P is given by this equation here. So again, the same idea here. What I've got is the center, um, which is minus 2, 3. We know one of the points that lies on the circle here, which is 3, 1. So if I can find the gradient from the center to this point here, so for that line segment, which is the radius, then in that case, we can find the perpendicular gradient and use this point here to find the straight line. So let's just box this off here, just so we've got enough room. So let's start part B up here. So let's find the gradient first of the radius. So M, that's equal to Y2 minus Y1 all over X2 minus x1 clearly you don't need to write this out i'm just doing it just so we've got full clarity here so again it doesn't matter which you say is x1 y1 and which is x2 y2 if i call this x1 y1 here and then this is x2 y2 so y2 minus y1 that is uh, 1 minus 3 so 1 minus 3 all over x2 minus x1 so x2, that is 3, and then we subtract minus 2. So 3 minus minus 2 is the same as 3 plus 2, okay? So I get 1 minus 3, which is minus 2, and then 3 plus 2 giving me 5, okay? So that's the gradient there of the radius. So we know that the tangent and the radius meet at a right angle because the perpendicular. So I want to now find the perpendicular gradient. Again, we flip this here, we take the reciprocal and times it by minus one. So I'm going to get five over two there. Okay. Now, because we've got the perpendicular gradient and we know the point here, which is three, one, we can now find the equation of the tangent to the circle at P. So using y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So just be careful here, this y1 and x1 don't correspond to this x1 and y1. This x1, y1 corresponds to the point of which we find the equation of the tangent. So that's at the point P, which is 3, 1. So it's going to be y minus 1 is equal to m, which is our perpendicular gradient, so 5 over 2, times x minus x1. So x1 here is 3, so minus 3. Here, let's save a bit of time. Let's just times uh, through by 2 here straight away. So I'm going to get 2y minus 2 is equal to 5 lots of x minus 3. So 5 lots of x minus 3 there. 
expand this right hand side here so run out of room a little bit um let's finish it off over here we should have enough room hopefully i get 2y minus 2 is equal to 5x minus 15. now i want it in this form here 5x minus 2y minus 13 is equal to 0. so in that case i need to subtract 2y off both sides and add 2 to both sides so therefore what i get is 5x minus 2y and then minus 15 plus 2 giving me minus 13 and that's all equal to zero okay so as required there and there we have it so that's our solution to the second question and that brings us to the end of this video on tangent and chord properties in the next video we'll take a look at exam revision for circles